Imagine this, sparkling tiaras adorned with diamonds, rubies, and sapphires proudly crowning royal figures at the most significant events. These tiaras hold secrets that often vanish along with them. The world of royal jewelry is filled not only with grandeur and luxury, but also with mysteries. Once these treasures adorned the heads of the most influential women, but now their traces have faded into time. Why? How could such a valuable item go missing? Were they dismantled, stolen, or hidden away? Today, we will unveil the most mysterious disappearances in the world of tiaras, once considered the pinnacle of jewelry artistry, but now existing only in memories. From royal collections to private collections, these disappearances have occurred over the centuries, leaving behind only questions and empty spaces in historical archives. Where are they? Will they ever return? Or perhaps some have already become part of another grand collection just under a different guise. Think about this as we begin our fascinating investigation. The first missing tiara is the Hyderabad Nizam tiara. This masterpiece by Cartier featured three removable English roses, one large and two smaller ones. The flowers were set in a diamond frame shaped like leaves, creating a tremblant effect. The primary material was platinum. The tiara allowed for the removal of the roses, which could be worn as brooches. Before Princess Elizabeth's marriage to Prince Philip, the Nizam of Hyderabad instructed Cartier in London to let the future queen choose any jewelry as a wedding gift. In addition to the tiara, Elizabeth selected a diamond necklace from Cartier, and both items were presented among the official gifts at St. James's Palace. In the early years of her marriage, Princess Elizabeth often appeared in the Hyderabad Nizam tiara, as her choices were limited at that time. Besides the famous girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara, she also had the Halo Scroll tiara and the Meander tiara, which belonged to Princess Andrew, but these were never displayed publicly. Notable occasions when Elizabeth was seen wearing the Nizam tiara include a banquet honoring the returning Dutch delegation, a dinner during the Norwegian state visit, and several official events during her tour of Canada in the fall of 1951. One of the last times the tiara was seen in public was at the Royal Variety Performance in 1952, just a few months before her ascension to the throne. After the queen ascended the throne, she was presented with rich opportunities to choose from tiaras that were royal relics. Soon, she also inherited a significant collection of jewelry from Queen Mary, allowing her to part with the Hyderabad Nizam tiara. However, the three brooches continued to serve as her adornments and still regularly appear at public events. In the 1970s, the remaining part of the tiara was dismantled to use the gemstones in the creation of the Burmese ruby tiara. This fact was confirmed by Hugh Roberts in his book, Royal Diamonds, in 2012. Although the tiara itself was no longer worn after 1952, the brooches that were part of it were frequently used by the queen for decades. The large rose was worn most often, appearing in public almost annually, while the two smaller brooches, worn as a pair, were shown less frequently. Next in our overview is the equally magnificent Northumberland strawberry leaf tiara. This piece was created from the diamonds of a ceremonial sword gifted to the third duke by King George IV. The tiara featured large strawberry leaf motifs rising from a diamond base and was styled like a Spanish ducal crown. This tiara was often seen on Helen Percy, the eighth Duchess of Northumberland, who served as the mistress of the Queen Mother's robes. Helen was a frequent guest at the most lavish events, including the coronations of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth II. However, attending such events had fateful consequences. In 1963, this magnificent piece was stolen when the Duchess's car was attacked outside her home in London, shortly after she had retrieved the tiara from the bank. Let's move on to the next masterpiece, the Poltimore tiara. It is named after its first owner, Florence Bamfield, Lady Poltimore. The tiara was created around 1870 by the master jeweler Gerard and was notable for its rare versatility. It could be worn as a tiara, as well as dismantled into a necklace and a total of 11 brooches. As a tiara, it could be presented in both full and reduced versions, making it one of the most transformable pieces of its time. Margaret, the wife of the third Baron Poltimore, wore this tiara at the coronation in 1911. Subsequently, her grandson, the fourth Baron Poltimore, put the piece up for auction in 1959, where it was purchased by Princess Margaret for just 5,500 pounds in anticipation of her wedding to Anthony Armstrong Jones. However, Margaret did not wait until the wedding day to showcase her new acquisition. In May 1959, a year before her royal wedding, she appeared wearing the tiara at the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden during a state visit from the Shah of Iran. 
The princess also wore the piece as a necklace. Despite having other tiaras in her collection, the Poltimore tiara became most closely associated with Princess Margaret. Even her husband, the renowned photographer, captured her in this piece in a famous photograph taken in their bathroom. After Margaret's death in 2002, her children faced a hefty inheritance tax. As a result, in 2006, the Poltimore tiara, along with several other jewels, was sold at auction at Christie's in London. Next in our overview is the equally magnificent Bavarian sunburst tiara. This exquisite gift was given to Infanta Maria de la Paz, Princess of Bavaria, on the eve of her wedding. At the age of 20, she received numerous precious adornments from both her own family and the relatives of her fiancé. However, the most valuable gift came from Prince Ludwig himself, a diamond tiara crafted by a renowned Munich jeweler, valued at 20,000 pesetas. The tiara features a striking central element, a heraldic lily set in a quivering position from which rays formed by spiky elements emanate. The sides of the tiara are adorned with leaves set with cushion-cut diamonds, pink diamonds, and regular diamonds, all mounted in silver. The tiara has a detachable base, allowing it to be worn as a necklace or an aigrette. Contemporary press reported that Infanta Maria de la Paz first showcased this piece on the eve of her wedding at a concert in the Royal Palace in Madrid, hosted by King Alfonso the Puente in honor of the Bavarian guests. On the day of the religious ceremony, Doña Paz wore this tiara to secure her wedding veil. Despite the elegance of this piece, the Infanta seemingly preferred her pearl and diamond tiara, which she regularly wore at significant events in Spain. For this reason, photographs of the Infanta wearing the sunburst tiara are quite rare. Nevertheless, this family heirloom was passed down to her descendants, who preserved it alongside other important relics for several generations. The women of the family continued to wear the tiara at royal celebrations. For instance, Ursula of Bavaria wore it at the wedding reception of Prince Albert and Princess Charlene in Monaco in 2011, and her daughter-in-law Anna wore it at the royal wedding in Sweden in 2010. In 2012, the tiara was worn by the Bavarian bride of Felipe. However, despite such a long and illustrious history, the family decided to sell the tiara at a Sotheby's auction in May 2013 for unknown reasons. Experts estimated its value at $100,000 to $150,000, but when the hammer fell, the piece sold for over $180,000. The legacy of the Romanovs is inextricably linked to the magnificence and loss of numerous valuable jewels. One such piece is the fringe tiara of Grand Duchess Maria Alexandrovna. This exquisite adornment was created in Russia in 1874 on the order of Emperor Alexander II, who presented it to his daughter Maria as a wedding gift. She married Prince Alfred, Duke of Edinburgh, the son of Queen Victoria. The tiara, designed in the form of diamond bands separated by diamond spikes, reflects the traditional Russian court diadem, the Kokoshnik. When Grand Duchess Maria Alexandrovna arrived in the UK, she wore her luxurious jewels, which caused displeasure among Queen Victoria and her daughters-in-law. Years after her marriage, the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh became the rulers of the Duchy of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha, where Maria Alexandrovna continued to shine in her tiara. She wore it in official portraits and at the coronations of her nephew, Tsar Nicholas II, in 1896, and King George V in 1911. After her death in 1920, the tiara passed to her younger daughter, Princess Beatrice, Duchess of Galliera. The princess, known as Baby B, wore the tiara at important events, including the coronation of her sister Maria of Romania in 1922 and the wedding of Princess Isabella Alfonso of Bourbon, Sicily in 1929. However, in the 1930s, needing funds for charity, Princess Beatrice sold the tiara. The buyer was her sister, Queen Maria of Romania, who continued to wear the piece, including in portraits by Philip de Laszlo. After Queen Maria's death in 1938, the tiara was inherited by her daughter, Queen Maria of Yugoslavia. However, the tiara was rarely used, and in 1960 it was sold at auction to art dealer Levi Cohen for £10,800. Since then, its trail has gone cold and the whereabouts of the tiara remain unknown. The next lost masterpiece is Queen Elizabeth's Cartier Bandeau. Elizabeth, born a Bavarian duchess, married Albert, the future king of Belgium, in 1900. She became queen in 1909 and acquired this tiara from Cartier in 1912. The Bandeau-style piece, worn low on the forehead, was made of diamonds set in platinum, featuring leafy motifs interspersed with scrolls. 
Queen Elizabeth retained the tiara after the tragic death of her husband in 1934 and continued to wear it at important events, such as her son Crown Prince Leopold's wedding to Princess Astrid of Sweden in 1926 and the ball celebrating her grandson King Baudouin's wedding in 1960. When Elizabeth passed away in 1965, she bequeathed the Cartier tiara to her son Leopold, who ruled Belgium as Leopold III until 1951. However, after controversies regarding his sympathies during World War II, he abdicated in favor of his eldest son, Baudouin. The tiara was then inherited by Leopold's second wife, Lillian, Princess of Rethy. Lillian had her own connections to the Cartier family. Her sister, Lydia Bales, was married to the head of the London branch of Cartier, Jean-Jacques Cartier. It remains unclear whether these family ties influenced the tiara's fate. Leopold died in 1983, and in 1987, Lillian decided to sell the tiara back to Cartier. Since Leopold had left the tiara to his wife, she had the right to dispose of it as she saw fit. However, this sale sparked disputes within the family, as Lillian apparently did not discuss her intentions with King Baudouin and Queen Fabiola. Today, the tiara is housed in Cartier's archives and is frequently displayed for public viewing. Although it did not remain within the royal family, Everyone has the opportunity to see this remarkable piece of jewelry. Let's conclude our journey with the magnificent Queen Maud's Pearl Tiara. This tiara is considered one of Norway's most significant jewels and adorned the heads of two generations of Norwegian royal ladies. It could have graced even more had it not been involved in quite a scandalous theft. The original pearl and diamond tiara was gifted to Queen Maud by her parents, King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra, on the day of her marriage to Prince Carl of Denmark in 1896. It is reported that the tiara was commissioned from Gerard, the official jeweler to the British royal family at the time. This exquisite wedding gift was meant for a princess joining a new royal lineage, but it soon became clear that it would play an important role in the collection of another royal family. Maud unexpectedly became queen in the newly independent Norway in 1905 when her husband was elected as the new monarch. She wore the tiara, which features a large removable central element, until her death in 1938. After her passing, her son, King Olav V, inherited the tiara, but he reunited with it only many years later. When Maud brought her jewels to the UK for a visit in the autumn of 1938, she unexpectedly passed away abroad. The late Queen's jewels were safely kept at Windsor Castle for 15 long years, including throughout World War II. Norway finally reclaimed the tiara in 1953 when they attended the coronation of Olav's cousin, Queen Elizabeth II. Today, the tiara belongs to King Harald V, who received it when his mother's jewels were divided after his marriage to Sonja Haraldsson in 1968. Sonja has worn both the large and small versions of the original, including during the state visit of Queen Elizabeth II to Norway in 1981. However, in 1995, tragedy struck. The tiara was sent to Gerard in London for cleaning, and during that time, it was stolen. The theft confirmed the tiara's approximate value at $312,000, but it has never been found. Gerard created a perfect replica of the original, and this is the tiara that Sonia has worn since. Which tiara would you like to see again? Let us know in the comments!